I think that's one of the big advantages. I think another potential big advantage is the mirror as well. I'm actually coming around to this version of the deck. I think I for a long while I preferred the Cthune version yeah. of the deck, probably just because it's cooler. I don't know. I, I kind of got biased towards and it in the end. trees aren't cool, subtle? I mean, I am also naturally very biased against Token Druid and have been for quite some time, so it's no great surprise that's coming out. But the more and more I think about it, the more I see the merit in terms of matchup spread of this version of the deck instead, particularly if you're expecting certain things, and particularly, I think, in Last Hero Standing. But certainly against a, uh, a Flame Imp Bloodbound, uh, Flame Imp Bloodbound Imp opening hand gamer from Frenetic, the uh, ability to go quick Glowfly Swarm might just be very much to uh, Letter's best interest here. Look at this opening as well from Frenetic. The coin into the Imp and then having Quest Imp attack with Raise dead, even if they do get cleared up somehow. Like, Frenetic's just already got Tamsin on, like, turn four. Even with the nerfs, it feels like at this point it's kind of nuts. True. Yo, did he just hero power the two fight? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Matter cares not for his health. Setting up for what, in two turns time, now a Glowfly, an Arbidop Glowfly can trade into it in one swing. Like three turns actually down the line. That's my only real instinct as to what that hero power does. That is some serious long-term planning. Well, also, do you not just think that it's even less about Arbor up and more that two just Glowflies can kill it straight as opposed to needing to uh, whip a hero power in just later on when you want to spend the mana elsewhere? Well, he has both in hand already, right? So I think no. it is about the Arbor Up because that interaction is going to happen. But yes, both of those things are true. But Colt Neophyte is going to make a big mess of that plan. It does have Luna, though, so that is something. It's not great, but he can at least just slow this down enough. He can kill a minion this turn and not really go for the armor up, but still. He might just be forced into this. The problem, though, is if he kills the Neophyte and there's Ray is dead, he's in a uh, similar position next turn. Yeah, so you probably just end up on the Flame Imp instead. The question is if and on what you spend the rest of your mana, because you can drop the Nature Studies after the Lunar Eclipse, of course, which then carries a little bit of a discount into next turn. But next turn is a turn where you don't really need the discount, right? Which is a little bit strange. Um, so kind of an interesting turn in that regard. Would you ever, ever drop it into the 2-4 for the Lunar? Why? To soften it up. <laughs> but why, Raven? Why do you say these things? I mean, it's just well, mainly actually, because why, what's, it, what's it, the plan? Cause it can get a value trade in the turn that you play Glowfly, right? Uh, if okay, it's yeah, going to sure. play value trades out, whereas if he just hits it now, yes, he takes extra damage. I'm fully aware that he leaves an additional minion up, uh, but I just wondered if then the glow flies just straight up trade into Frenetic's board. Okay. Oh, no! Yes, subtle. Yes. He's already dead. Still fine, though. The reduction from the studies allowed him to play Glowfly without overcommitting too much. He might actually end up bailing on the Arbor up in favor of a Scenarium War, depending on how the rest of this turn looks out for Frenetic, of course. Yeah, how the rest of this turn works out for Frenetic, though, is that many more Cult Neophytes are probably coming down this turn. It's not a given. You could still choose to be extremely aggressive in this position, I suppose. But clearing a good chunk of this up and playing some more Cult Neophytes does look very attractive. Yeah, looks like that's what he's going to go for. He's just going to guarantee the one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so he wants to curve out perfectly with the Drain Soul, guaranteed if he's doing it this way. This was a still guaranteed one-on-one -on -one drop. Yeah, still procs the quest. Still pushes the three extra. Gets one more Neophyte down. Okay. Also makes up some of the damage very cleanly with the other Imp attack, right? Because he propped the quest exactly with the flame imp, and now he gets to just put the two. True. Yeah, good quest efficiency as well. Like our quest ticker is up to date now as well, yeah. keeping track of the eights accurately for the warlock. Love it. Now, it pretty much has to be Arbor up this turn and just 
quad trade, which is painful. But from that point afterwards, he does have Scenario, and he's very quickly approaching the manor where he just has um, Solar Scenario as well, if he draws it, of course. Mm -hmm. so he's got Double Innovate, he's got Bloom, he's got all the manor in the world next turn, so I think Arbor up Quad Trade is not as bad as it looks at first glance. It does look really bad, though, doesn't it? <laughs> like, it does. The Arbor Up doesn't achieve anything, basically. Like, you played a couple of 4-3s this turn, but if you're making the trades, you're just making hey, the trades. It doesn't one value any trade value there. trades. <laughs> yeah, no, one value trade did happen. That's fair. But I think Letter, quite rightly, again, taking this moment to just think about things. Because even though Frenetic has played this out in a very aggressive way, he's not really an aggro deck. He doesn't really have damage from hand that can uh, capitalize on this, right? So Letter's kind of within his rights to actually decide to be a bit aggressive here if he would like to be. Wow. Well, both? I thought he was going to trade one. Oh. Okay. I'm just going to bank on the fact that Frenetic is going to trade. And Frenetic is going to trade. But he, is this his second quest proc? He, yeah, he's out of damage from the quest. Ooh. Yeah, he's outright out of damage from the quest. Wow. That was beautifully done from wow. them. I think great understanding claps for himself, I think, in that scenario. And deservedly as well. None of this salty, sarcastically clapping your opponent. Play well, clap yourself. Obama giving Obama a medal. That's the vibe we're looking for here on the Grandmasters broadcast. And that was a beautifully finished out uh, game there from Letter. I love that he stopped and thought about it. I love even more that he reached the correct conclusion because as you were asking the right question the damage from the quest was done with yeah. at that point the last quest step was the tamsin step so there was actually no extra damage from frenetic able to come out there so letter understood by pushing the extra damage he just sets up lethal forget all that scenario nonsense raven i'm he just sorry. hitting him with glow flies yeah actually more started to look at celestial next turn as well but he needs <laughs> yes. a next turn when you've just yeah. won uh, yeah, just looking at this as well, just to you know, triple confirm, basically, there was no way to push any additional damage without magically getting Tamsin online and playing it and playing other cards in that turn. So, yeah, great recognition there from Letter. And he was rewarded as he now gets to play the Druid once again. But this time, Frenetic, uh, Frenetic sorry, is going to be queuing up the Face Hunter. Has, as I mentioned earlier, included that Moonfang there in the list, along with a Truane Crescent, of course. But uh, still, we've seen a Hunter lose to this Druid before. Four because, like I mentioned earlier, those glow flies are key. Hunter often just does not really have a response to like a, a large glow fly turn from the uh, from the druid. I will say, however, if the time is given to the hunter, boy, does Moonfang get there against druids. Oh, yeah. Like that thing does not get removed, and more so, I think there's kind of an underrated interaction that you know people don't necessarily talk about enough with Moonfang, and that's the True Aim Crescent interaction, because everyone looks at that as like a Rhino card a lot of the time, but Moonfang can do some disgusting stuff with True Aim Crescent as well, especially when you're against another deck that plays big minions, like Celestial, uh, sorry, um, Scenarian style minions on the other mm. side, right? You can have a pretty nice interaction. Oh, the key card of the whole deck, though, let us just got hold of the Claw Machine. He's ready to go. Take me to your leader. Step up! We did see Fungal burn an anaconda yesterday, though, so... Never mind, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> What was the dynamic? I think it was America's where we there was a game where the I think it was Language Hacker was deliberately not killing a claw machine just to not draw the Anaconda, and the Anaconda was just sat in the hand the entire <laughs> time, and it didn't matter. Here though, Frenetic got off to a decent start here, gets the Neophyte going into turn four to try and not, uh, lock out some of the ramp uh, potentially available for Letter. We can see Overgrowth is there. He had the Felmore down nice and early as well, so it's all lining up here for Frenetic to be as aggressive as, honestly, you can possibly hope to be in this matchup. But again, the, the, the big problem is, yes, Letter's taken a ton of damage, but he can Glowfly next turn, and Frenetic has to make that instant decision. Does he respect the 2-2s, two or does he just go face and hope? Yeah. 
Maybe sizing is pouch a get him anything. Choice. It could get him a bloom, right? Uh, not this turn. Wait, right? Yeah, it's neophyte, isn't it? Yeah, but it would have been nature studies discounted. Oh, it would, right? So it reverts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're right. You're right. So it still would have okay, cost him yep. one. And even then, like, if he'd have taken it, cast Guess the Weight, he would then lose the Nature Studies discount, so then the, the pouch would still be uncastable right. at that point. There wasn't any way to engineer it that turn, so... Nope, completely right. Arian Ward does make sense. The old Neophyte versus Studies dynamic. Mm-hmm. What's that? 9, 10, 11... So 16 damage available for Frenetic next turn. And Letter's simply in trouble. Letter's know it's that much damage, of course. Yeah, but he knows it's 13 just with yeah. hero power, which means he basically has zero options this turn. Can't play Glowfly. Like you said, that is the generally the route to victory for Druid in this matchup. Just stabilize a little bit early on and then play the Glowfly. Use that for the counter swing. Basically, exactly what Letter did to the, the Zoo Delete Warlock thing in the last game is just be behind and then suddenly be in front with Glowfly and Swarm. It's kind of the rhythm of the deck. And that's what I was on about earlier, where the opening for Frenetic against specifically Druid was perfect. He got the Felmore down instantly. He followed up with the Neophyte at the correct time to slow down the big turns that Druid normally wants to hit on turn 4 and 5. Right. It's all lined up very well, and that's just going to be 8 billion damage in a blink of an eye. Frenetic took the victory there. Nice setup with having that piercing shot in hand, which is a one-off in his list as well. I think that's the cup for the Moonfang. But Frenetic does even it up, and Druid isn't going to sweep away all of the competition today, Sotom. No, indeed. Face Hunter getting onto the board. The game didn't get anywhere close to uh, Moonfang territory because uh, Frenetic got to play a Moonfang on turn one or turn two with the 5-4 the that he loaded up on the board to start trucking away. It was the perfect opening, right? Because sometimes the damage can come a little bit slower with Hunter if they have, like, Wolpertinger opening. Yeah, yeah. Um, just Hero Powers can interact with that fairly well with the classes that are able to do that, Druid being one of them. So the damage just doesn't pile up quite this quickly. But 5-4 plus a 4-2 Divine Shield coming down in the early game to be attacking Druid every turn. Yeah, Druid just falls over and dies to that. And exactly what Letter did in the end. And just especially blocking out the Overgrowth there as well, because if Overgrowth could have been played on the turn the Neophyte came down, uh, he would have had potential to, like, innovate Scenarium Ward or something, right, at, at that point in the game on that final turn. So uh, really well-timed uh, pressure from Frenetic. It doesn't mean Letter's going to respond now with the Fell Demon Hunter again. Almost a counter Q pick, as is often the case in Last Hero Standing. Uh, we are seeing this is more of the general Fell that we had pre-patch as well as opposed to the newer version of the list that people are sort of playing around with so letter i think is in a very good position here with just the sheer amount of removal he has and also the fact that this is a matchup where he can just throw a moag down on turn two and then ask frenetic to deal with it yes very true um i remains to be seen how the matchup is for this version of the deck with uh, magtheridon coming in uh, comparison to how Fell Demon Hunter used to be, but as you said, it's still a lot closer to just the pure Fell Demon Hunter we had before than some of the more hybrid lists that are coming out. Right. Um, and some of the more hybrid lists, sorry, so the classic Fell Demon Hunter that we had before Magtheridon was in a, a inclusion more and more in the list was very, was somewhere in the region of 85, 90% against Face Hunter, I would say, overall. It just seemed impossible to win from the Hunter side in a lot of positions. So yeah, very, very good matchup that Letter has here, I would say. Yeah, it, it really was just like, build a deck to beat face hunter <laughs> and it's like oh yeah. well this will do and in the opening hand here for letter i beam already outcast so that is going to be useful in the very near future has the immolation aura if frenetic had a wider opening with the likes of wobble uh Warptinger. and even as they are draki warblades this is just a strong all-round opening here for letter they will never catch me it's a runner Pretty nice, actually, with that Felmore. It means that Frenetic's going to have to try and kill this 1-1 if he wants a guaranteed 5 to face. Mm-hmm. Let me work my magic. 
We'll see what comes off the demon companion Ooh. here. Okay, I mean, it's the one where Frenetic actually has to think about doing the icky thing, right? <laughs> I think you always go face. Okay. Because is there a world that Let is just going to push the one with the Sigil Runner and, yes. and, and not? Oh. Genuine, okay. Just in terms of maths, right? If you trade into the 2 1 with the 1 1, you take 2 damage off the board. If you leave the 1 1 on the board, you take 2.5 damage off the board, right? Like, isn't that just correct to go face in that position? I couldn't make myself do it, so. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. This is just right, I think. He's not going to swing either, okay. Yeah. Boom! He healed that turn. <laughs> and this is one thing that is important as well with the Aldraki Warblades in this deck, because you have a good chunk of options to actually increase your weapon attack, being able to take a hit is absolutely fine. Uh, there's so much heal that you can even see just in Letter's hand, never mind <laughs> the rest of the deck and the weapon buffs. Like the Eye Beam with the Immolation Aura clears this board no problem. The Fell Screen Blast, as soon as he draws a Moag, that probably just sets him in a completely healthy state as well. And this is why the matchup is so difficult for the Hunter, because at any real point in the game, it, the Demon Hunter can just reset the game, except the Hunter yep. has worse cards. Yep. Yeah, I want to go back to that turn as well, because it is quite interesting. Like, in no world do I think Frenetic should actually trade there. I think both players did the correct play on those turns, because, again, I think Letter attacking face, it, it gains him 0.5 of a health in weird worlds, if you want to look at it like that. But I think if Frenetic trades for him, he is then missing two damage and healing him for right, more right. over the course of the game as well. So I think in, in that regard, everything, everything both players did made sense in that scenario. Now, interesting choices here from Letter. He can use up a weapon swing, or he can go fell screen blast, or I beam, or he could just do nothing and just say, hit me for two, I don't care, and then just wait, which is where one of the options at least I like. I think he can be a little bit greedier with the swings, but this does uh, go on top of the fact that he has a second Aldraki Warblades in hand, yes. and probably enough mana to do whatever he wants next turn anyway with those blades, so don't, don't hate it. Yeah, completely agree. I think you break that turn down perfectly. Nine out of ten hands, I would have been on the do-nothing plan there as well. But since he has second Warblades locked up in hand, uh, this is fine. He's also curving out very nicely against the expected play. If Rhino were to come down there or if uh, Kodo Bane were to come down there, they're both five health minions, essentially. One trades into the four attack minion, the other one leaves the four attack minion up. So he has Felscreen Blast still in hand to be able to deal with that situation if he really, really wants to as well. Good barrage instead. Okay. I believe the uh, pro players call it barrage. This blew my mind the other day. <laughs> and that is a fact. <laughs> yeah, no, that is a fact. As much as I uh, made fun of uh, Raven for saying barrage, which, by the way, no UK accent says barrage. We all say barrage. It's just Raven being weird. And then I was watching Bly's stream, and Bly's, a Frenchman, <laughs> was saying barrage. And it was absolutely blew my brain apart. <laughs> oh, if you're good, you're good. Okay. That's all you need yeah. to know. Yeah. One thing I have in common with Blaze. <laughs> I grow impatient. Arcanist, I uh, beam. And a wardrobe full of black hoodies. <laughs> yeah. Arcanist, I beam. Looks pretty solid to me. Just get rid of the uh, big minion on board. Could even hero power after that. It does mean he skips our Draki Warblades, though. Hmm. Also, Let has been a little bit light on the old weapon buff so far. Is it just the one Chaos Strike he's had so far this game? I think so, yeah. Yeah, still two Furies remaining. But even then, like, who cares, right? Like, even then, this is the kind of play that I love to see as well. Just pushing just pushing the one and then equipping the weapon down afterwards, just leaving five damage in play against Face Hunter. He just doesn't care. Like, nothing Hunter can do scares you when you're playing this deck. What about that? 
he can't, he can't arc and his fell screen blast it now. No, nope, he can just arc and his arc and his fell screen blast it instead. Yes, exactly. <laughs> At this point, it's like yes, sink more damage into my face, please, so I can get maximum efficiency oh, out of this double shot. heal this turn. And the problem here as well is, although we're saying you know, letter is approaching this, I think in a very good fashion. Ooh. But Frenetic doesn't have a choice, right? Like, no. there's no way to reduce the Hunter hand cost to be able to burst it all in one turn. We're not playing Mage. Love this, by the way. This once again, once something Let has been super on top of this whole series is understanding even when he's in a defensive position when it's time to be aggressive. And this was absolutely it because even if all of these cards happen in the worst possible order, that's a board clear, guaranteed. So he now gets to attack phase, and instead of using Arcanist and Felscreen Blast to clear the board and heal, he now has double Arcanist Barrage that can go face potentially if he's able to get a clear board, which I am super hype about, but Frenetic is loading up on a bunch more minions here, disappointingly. Right, can he do it a different way though? Let me have a look. Can Felscreen Blast? Or is this just lethal? Oh. It's just, yes, exactly, he's right. Nine with the it blast, is. four with the weapon. Oh. Yeah, very nicely done. I was like, fell screen blast, uh, hero power swing face, and then have the uh, Arcanist, Arcanist spell barrage. Mm -hmm. But still, Letter got the job done, and I think that was just uh, a masterclass into how to approach a matchup such as Hunter or any sort of board-based aggressive matchup. Uh, you know that you can recover with the hand he had. He had all of the heal available. And like we said pretty early on, it's like, yeah, just just get hit. It's fine. You just get all that health back and you get to clear the board. It's a, it's a win-win. And as we mentioned, th this Demon Hunter feels like it was almost built to exactly beat this type of deck. And and, uh, and it can do well versus others as well, but this is really where, where it excels. Yeah, just the right number of AoEs, way too much healing, more healing than anyone could ever need against an outright hunter, de an outright aggro deck as is Face Hunter. Um, and really, if you're going to beat this deck as an aggro deck, you need more so the ability to make persistent boards than you do damage from off board, right? Because you can throw as many aim shots and piercing shots at your opponent as you please. If they have Aldraki Warblades, if they have Felscreen Blast, they're gonna heal that back in double time. So you need to make a board, get it AoE'd, make another board, get it AoE'd, make another board, and then maybe that one sticks. That's how the aggro deck beats Fel Demon Hunter more often than not. It's why Shadow Priest had a bit more of a chance, the combination of Elusia and the fact that they're just able to refill board over and over and over again, that eventually they might get something to stick, but Face Hunter just never gets that. There. Right, it does mean that Frenetic is moving on to his Gro Rogue now as the last deck left to go against this Fell Demon Hunter. Did you like the way I said that song? I was gonna say, does anyone else hear the Scooby-Doo Rot Row thing when he says Garot Rogue, or is it just is it just me? Let me know. At me. I wanna know. Does anyone else hear it? And then now everyone's just gonna say they do because they wanna join you in laughing at me as usual. <laughs> so people are like, oh yeah, yeah, I definitely heard it. Right. Peer pressure, peer pressure. <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's it. I wanna be cool too. Um <laughs> Uh, moving on, game number four. Demon Hunter, of course, for Letter on the bottom and Frenetic on this Rogue. And this is a little bit more of a tricky matchup uh, because, yeah, Demon Hunter can clear up those Rogue boards very easily uh, with the likes of Immolation Aura, the Fell Barrage, uh, Fell Screen Blast, and anything else. But Rogue isn't fully reliant on that type of play, right? They can get to, they can draw the deck super fast, get to the Garou combo. And the problem with that is all healed in the world doesn't help if you die. One turn. Only guy I know from Manchester that says barrages instead of just barrages. <laughs> That's just only funny to me, Saul. I know. I know sometimes I do say no one's going to get this that reference, but literally no one is going to get that reference. If Shuffle T is watching, he will get that reference. It's the only person on the planet. I'll wait for the tweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, knowing me, you'll probably tweet, you go, oh, yeah, I'm watching, I, I, I get the reference. And I do agree, it does sound like Scooby-Doo. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, screw Raven, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Quickly moving back to more important things, though, uh, which could be the last game of this series if Letter can take the victory here. And that is a pretty uh, uh-oh kind of secret passage here for Frenetic. Does, not do does he just play Flinger and be like, well, one less card? 
Oh, it's so gross, isn't it? I'm just staring at it, waiting for it to get better, and it's just not. Spend your mana, flinger, hero power. Well, face for one, hero power. Hey, loser. I honestly think that's the play. Yeah. Yeah. It's just one less card in the deck, right? And his flinger really, it's not, it's not the same level of importance as those three other cards, right? Just get it out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, also, just to clarify, what was the ban this series for Letter? Uh, wait, what did he ban or what did he get banned Yeah, away? what is Frenetic not allowed to play? Oh, Demon Hunter, his hybrid. Okay, interesting. Because I do think when you're just playing pure Fell Demon Hunter, this matchup is super scary, and I wonder in his lineup, like, what his go-to answer to Rogue is overall. Um, because the Druid matchup is winnable, right? The Demon Hunter is scary. He does have that warrior, warrior, of course, which we haven't really seen. But then I don't know if you wonder whether your warrior is getting banned on the other side to potentially then set up the Rogue Sweep. I think it's super interesting because I think Fell Demon Hunter in general is just too slow. And because there's no natural glide in your deck, which is the way that most other Demon Hunters beat Rogue, I think you do have a little bit of a weakness to Rogue with the way the lineup is constructed. Yeah. So kind of interested that the Rogue just gets to rock in the series. Yeah, I, I do like the Warrior versus the Rogue, honestly, but like I said, I was also a bit surprised that Frenetic went for the Rogue ban um, and not the Warrior in itself. Right, yeah, I think ban Warrior, Rogue sweep is interesting, but then at the same time, did Frenetic think his Rogue was getting banned, right? That's kind of what I'm getting into is like, did some mind games take place here in the way that these back and forth bans took place? Well, while we've been talking about top level macro strategy, Frenetic's mm -hmm. just drawn some good cards now. He's probably yep. feeling a little bit better about his life as opposed to uh, the turn during the uh, the secret passage where everything looked a little bit grim. Yeah, it's why my brain kind of diverted to that talking point as well, because looking at the silver lining during that secret passage, like, yeah, that passage sucked and you did nothing that turn. But honestly, this matchup is as such for Rogue that they can sometimes afford to just do nothing for a turn or two because... Demon Hunter kills you quite slowly. It's very rare that they're going to, like, Ilganoth OTK you on turn 8 or turn 9, right? So you can then afford to get to turn 8 or turn 9 as Rogue um, to actually finish your combo. Oh, yeah. Uh, as evidence now by Letter saying he needs to giddy up in this position and actually try and get oh. on with something here. That is the most dead Ilganoth you have ever seen this turn. It is the most dead Ilganoth I've ever seen this turn, yeah, because it's the only Ilganoth that I've seen this turn. And that's a fact. Nice. <laughs> that's a fact, Jack. <laughs> it's Raven's new catchphrase. I'm not sure it's going to catch on and sweep the nation, but he's trying. The best part of the catchphrase is when you say it when it's not a fact, that's the best yeah. use. Yeah. Yeah, Ilganoth getting cleaned up. I do like what Letter was going for, though. Um, it's uh, one of the plays that you can look at because you do ask a reasonable question to your opponent if they can kill an Ilganoth cleaned out on turn five, right? From, yeah. you know, not an empty board with the golem there, but still. Not I think with the way the... Commitment. I think with the way the hand was as well, he just needed to get on with something with Skull, right? So it felt like he might sort of throw it out as a threat, try and contest the Golem. I think when you're playing it into a 5-5 Divine Shield Golem, you're not really expecting it to stick and attack phase for 8-16 damage over the course of the game, but it might have been able to contest, and if it was oh. able to contest, it might have then been able to uh, help you clear up that 5-5 Golem and you're progressing through to playing Skull of Gul'dan and actually getting something going. It's all it's time. Mactherodon time. Mactherodon o'clock. Arcanist and the Fell Scream Blaster. The benefit of this is it's not Immolation Aura, which means it will be a 12-12 Mactherodon. Uh, because obviously the Immolation Aura we've seen multiple times already. The second wave of it actually procs after the Mactherodon comes out. So yeah, Letter gets a full 12-12. We just saw double Plunderer. The Golem is gone. Brain Freeze is gone. That was good a time, and his letter could have hoped for, honestly. One thief is not gone. Flurry is not gone. Oh, that flurry's disgusting. Quick, draw a librarian. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. It was looking good until that flurry came along. <laughs> Oh, 
Remaining cards here for Frenetic. They just still have Double Shroud, which is a little bit annoying at this point in the game. You normally want those long gone by now. But with a prep, Shadow Step as well, it's probably still feeling pretty confident going forward. E yes. So with preps and Shadow Step still remaining, I think... Uh, Shroud are actually might be the cards you don't want to draw in this position right. because if you drew Shadow Step and Prep quickly enough, you could go the Shadow Step Octobot route, I believe, to be able to then guarantee this. We look one more time with the other remaining Ethereal Org Merchant as well, right? If you go Octobot, proc it. Actually, you'd have to proc with one of your spell damages, though, which is a problem, right? Because you'd then lose that when you Shadow Step it back off the board, which is slightly right. annoying. Looks like he's going to go for it anyway, though. Because you saw prep remaining, shadow step remaining, org merchant remaining, two mana remaining. Uh, now what? <laughs> yeah, I'm worried I, about this. I think he might have been safe enough to just wait a turn, right? Like, yes, so the Magtherodon's scary, but it requires Wind Fury to kill you this turn. And even yes. a Jace is not damage loaded enough to kill him, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's only been the Fel Barrage that's been played. There's still two Furies, I think. There's still a one Chaos Strike. And that's so it. He's going to play the Secret Passage now and guarantee the Shadow Step, which he could do. That's fine. However, now what does the Shadow Step achieve? Because at this point... He has Can't zero stop. spell damage in play and only plus one spell damage remaining. So his breakpoint is now eight times three. So he needs everything. He's still fine, but I don't know whether this like, was made slightly more difficult than it needed to be. And the problem as well is that secret is actually infuriating for Letter, right? Because he, okay, I'm glad if he, if he goes for this, I'm glad. Just because even if it's counter spell, at a point like this, you just act as if it isn't, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get rewarded. It's the news, it's Netherwind and manageable minion there. Does have eye beam to take down the the field contact. And also that means if he kills the field oh there's a swindle to draw, right? Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say I, at first I was like, wait, is there just not a way to draw the last card for Frenetic? No, he's still fine. I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of disruption outs as well there from Letter. Um if he got Illidari studies into Glide or something like that, then he obviously he increases the deck size by a little bit, which could be relevant because there is still only that one source of uh, card draw left remaining. Oh, yeah. that, oh he, yeah, didn't he didn't draw get it. it! Yeah, He didn't draw it, he drew the prep instead! So yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about, right? If you could disrupt with either Stalina or Glide to right. essentially stack more cards into the deck, you then decrease those odds because you need to hit the out at that point. Um, and yeah, you've got to point questions, right? You've got to go back to uh, top five, bottom five, Garot Rogue, Miss Lethals, or whatever it was called, um, for Frenetic in that position, because, again, was he under danger to have had to have gone for that in the position? I think it was complicated by the fact that if you could Secret Passage and you have, like, a 70% chance of hitting, like, a Brain Freeze, for example, then that, that turn becomes so straightforward, right? But staring down a 12-12 at 24 is scary in that position because, you know, there are still Furies. You didn't start the turn with a Neophyte in your hands. So you're not even necessarily disrupting, like, a Fury, Fury, Fel Barrage kind of play on the other side if you don't put minions in play. So it's certainly scary, and I certainly understand, like, why he felt pressured into going for it. I started the turn thinking, yeah, I think this is pretty guaranteed with what he had left, but then bailed out of that position very quickly as well. So I think I would have ended up not going right. for it. I think you could certainly see some of the pitfalls that were available there for Frenetic going yeah, for and, that turn. And I think it's if it was Fury, Fury, Fel Barrage on an empty board, it would have been lethal, right? Because that would have ended 12 with the weapon swing. That's so, right. Um, so it would have been lethal uh, if he didn't play anything, and that was the exact outcome. I just thought that there was maybe too much of an element of risk for just going for it on that single turn, and Frenetic uh, you know, paid the price, I guess, uh, that time at least. But it does mean Letter takes the victory and the series as he moves on to top four, and uh, what, what a great few weeks for Letter it has been, not only with his his quality of play but in his results themselves yeah